Christ, the final one that comes to roll away a problem. We pray that by faith, we touch you tonight in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, every life will turn around for the better. Take hold of everyone and use your power to descend on everything around us so that your blessing will be ours in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that heaven will say amen to all our requests. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down in great expectation tonight because tonight is your night of supernatural freedom. Freedom. Tonight we're looking at John chapter 1, reading from verse 29. John chapter 1, reading from verse 29. The next day John said, Jesus come in unto him and said, Behold the Lamb, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He operates everywhere in the world, here and there, online, on television, on radio, any continent you, you are, any country you are, any congregation you are now, or as an individual you are linking up, he is the Lamb of God that taketh away, taketh away, takes away all the sin of everyone in the world. And as you come tonight, and as you are there tonight, and you link up and connect with the Lord, he'll take all your sin away. I thought you will say a good amen. amen. And all the consequences of sin, all the sickness, all the satanic affliction, every sin that is the offshoot and the fruit and the consequence of our sin, the Lord will take everything away from your life tonight as you believe on the Lord in Jesus' name. Behold, behold, behold the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God, not the Lamb of man, chosen by man, and the man, man telling him, you can't do this, you can't do this. This is the Lamb of the Almighty God, the God that so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, whosoever in the whole wide world believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life and you're invited tonight to behold by faith to look by faith and to hold by faith that lamb of god who takes away the sin and the consequence of sin all over the world we're told in first john chapter 3 verse 5 first john chapter 3 verse 5 and ye know that he was manifested that means he came just for one purpose. He came just for one reason. And as you come for the same purpose that Christ came, that this is what he came to do. And you also come and you want him to do that same thing in your life. It says we know that he Christ, he the Savior, he the Lamb of God was manifested to take away our sin, your sin, everyone's sin all over the world. That's why Christ came. And tonight, the purpose of his coming will be fulfilled in your life. Amen. He will set you free. He will deliver you. He will take all those sins connected with evil. He will take everything away from your life, from your soul, your spirit, your body, tonight in Jesus' name. And then it says, in him is no sin. In him is no sin. He never did anything wrong. Why then did he suffer? He suffered for you. He died for you. He died so that you come to the life of Christ because he was manifested. He was revealed. He came to this world to take away your sin because in him is no sin. There's a watch 
that I need to throw across to you there is the word substitution. Substitution. When it should have carried a particular load, and that load will overwhelm you, overweigh you, and it will crush you. And that person said, I carry that for you. It becomes your substitute. What you should have done, which you couldn't do, another person has come to do it for you. So tonight, I'm talking on the substitutionary lamp for our supernatural freedom. Christ became your substitute to carry the load you couldn't carry, to bear the punishment you couldn't bear, and to suffer in a way that you couldn't suffer for your sin is the Lamb of God that came as Savior, came as substitute, came as the final sacrifice for your sin. The substitutionary lamb for our supernatural freedom. I have freedom tonight. I said you have freedom tonight. Be confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. The three things we're looking at. Number one, behold the heavenly lamb of God. Behold the heavenly lamb of God. He came from heaven. It's not an earthly lamb. Every other lamb that had been sacrificed, whether in Egypt on that day they came out of Egypt or any other time on the altar of the children of Israel, it was an earthly lamb born in the world, made in the world, sacrificed in the world. But this lamb came from heaven, and the Father spoke from heaven, this is my beloved son. He came from heaven in whom I am well pleased, beholding the heavenly lamb of God. Point number two, believing the healing Lord of all goodness is full of goodness. And it helps everyone. It heals everyone. It delivers everyone. There's no reason for him to be partial. Why? He came for the whole world. He came to heal he came to save. He came to help the whole world. And so you believe the healing Lord of all goodness. Now num number three is beginning the honorable life of grace. Tonight you are going to begin a new life. I said tonight you are going to begin a new life. Honorable life. The grace of God made available through Christ. That grace is coming to you tonight. And you begin a good life. Honorable life. A straightforward life. Honest life. Honorable life of grace. One, two, three. You begin. Number one. That's beholding the heavenly Lamb of God. Again, I'm going to read to you from John chapter 1, from verse 36. John chapter 1, verse 36. And looking upon Jesus as he walks, it says, Behold the Lamb of God. Can I tell you something? Uh, that this sentence, Behold the Lamb of God. That's the whole career of John the Baptist. Think about it, person. He was sent into the world. He was born and he lived for just one thing, to declare to the world, behold, the Lamb of God. That statement must be so important that one person, the forerunner of Christ, had to be born into the world to say, to declare just one thing. And once he declared that, his ministry was fulfilled. He came to reveal and to tell you that this is the Lamb. 
the lamb that will take your sins away, the lamb that will give you forgiveness, the lamb that will give you freedom, the lamb that will make you to be a reconciled unto God. And he has now done, he has effected his ministry as he tells you, behold the lamb. And if you're going to respond to the ministry of such a man, what he said is very simple. Number one, he shows the lamb to take away all our sin. Number two, it shows that he is of God, appointed by God. He is of God and the only one that God has affirmed that he is the one that has the power, authority, Take away all your sin. And when it takes that sin away, it will no more be there because it, it is taken away. And it says, all you have to do is behold. That he is with the eyes of faith, with the mind of faith, with the heart of faith. You look on him and you see there's no other way. There's no other plan. And there is all, no other means to have all my sins taken away. Taken away from my heart. Taken away from my habit. Taken away from my lifestyle. I behold the Lamb of God. And look at that in verse 30. In verse 37, it says, And the two disciples heard him speak. And they followed Jesus. When you hear, you must act on the message. When those disciples that had been with John, they heard. They didn't say, well, we're any disciples of John. Well, we're already in religion. They knew that this was the climax of the ministry of John. And he had declared, behold the Lamb. And those two, immediately, they responded like you are going to respond tonight. When you hear, look at the Lamb. Behold him. Believe him. Accept him, and he is the one that has the power, has the authority, and he has the approval of God in heaven that he and he alone will take away your sin, take away the consequence of sin. All the punishment you should have borne, he takes that away, he takes away the corruption. of sin. He cleanses you. He purges you. He takes away everything that you are not in possession of them anymore. The two disciples followed after Christ in verse 38. It says in verse 38, then Jesus turned and saw them following. You want him to see you tonight that yes, Lord, I'm here. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have heard you are the Lamb. I have heard you are the Savior. I've heard you are the Redeemer. You look at your life. There is still sin there. There's still that habit, bad habit there. There is that thing that propels you and draws you and drives you to do evil. And you know that the sin will be recognized and punished by God. And there's only one way you can have forgiveness and freedom and salvation. And it's by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore you do as these two disciples come and you say, Lord, I am following. And they will see you following tonight. I said they will see you following tonight. And say unto them, watch Seek ye. What are you looking for? You're looking for the salvation that comes from him, the Lamb of God. You're looking for the freedom. 
for the forgiveness that comes from him, the Lamb of God. You're looking for the power, the authority, and the strength, and the grace to live a different life, a saved life, and a life above all the levels of sinfulness you have been living before. What seek ye? If you have some, you know, you come here, if you are not seeking anything, I just came, those who just came, and they are not expecting to have or receive anything, what are they going to have when they just went to the market only to look around and to go back? But because you're seeking for something, you're looking for something, you're asking for something, you're desiring something in your heart, what seek ye? We seek forgiveness, we seek freedom, we seek salvation, we seek the taking away of our sin. If that's what you are seeking, you'll get it tonight. Yeah. I get it tonight. Yeah. And you will not go back home empty hearted in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hey, look at Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 22. Isaiah chapter 45, reading from verse 22 look unto me. Look unto me. You've been looking this way and that way, and the Lord is saying, there's no victory there. There's no salvation there. You look to the hills and say, that is your God. There's no salvation there. You look to the river and see that will bring deliverance to you. There's no salvation there. You look to rituals and ceremonies of religion. And the Lord is saying, there's no salvation there. You look at the human effort, what I can do by myself. All the effort I can make, there's no salvation in the effort you make by yourself. You look at your determination. This thing, I will conquer it. You cannot conquer sin by human determination. You look at tradition. Here is the tradition our forefathers gave us, and our forefathers, by that tradition, they did not overcome sin, or the consequence of sin, or the punishment of sin. And what they have handed over to us, somebody handed over to them. Somebody else handed over that one to the other people, generation to generation. And we have been a generation all over the world of sinful people, helpless people, powerless people. That's why it says, all have sinned. What does that mean? All who got that same tradition you have got before you and were passing that tradition on, those ceremonies on, those rituals on, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But as you have looked this way and that way, thinking you have salvation there, now you look in the right direction and it says, look unto me. And be ye saved. As you look to the Lord tonight, you'll be saved. Amen. He'll take all the sin away. He'll take all the guilt away. He'll take all the condemnation away. Look unto me and be ye saved. All the ends of the earth. Look at that. All the ends of the earth. All the ends of the earth. Anyone, anywhere, wherever you are, whatever you have done, the only way to have the salvation of the Lord is look to the Lamb that God himself has given. He said, for I am God and there is none else. Number one, you behold the heavenly Lamb of God, and thereby salvation will come. Thereby forgiveness will come. Thereby freedom will come. Thereby the joy of salvation and the assurance that heaven now has recorded your name as a saved soul. All that will come because you behold the heavenly lamb of God. Number two, number two is believing the healing Lord of all goodness. Believing. When we believe that faith will pass that healing virtue into your body. If you are blind, as you believe tonight, those blind eyes will open. 
If you are lame, as you believe him tonight, that same miracle will happen unto you. Believe the healing Lord of all goodness. Can I explain that to you? He is Lord. He is in charge. He controls everything. All those things that bother you. All those things that weaken you. All those things that make you paralyzed, impotent, incompetent, and you are just there and you cannot do anything by yourself. He is the Lord in charge, in control. And he will take all those sicknesses away from your life tonight. Say, I believe. Say that again. I believe. Look at Mark chapter 5, verse 36. Mark chapter 5, we're reading from verse 36. It says, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, it says to the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Somebody had come to call Jesus. He will heal the daughter, the only daughter he had. And as Christ was going with the man to go and heal the daughter, they brought information. They said, now the problem is beyond solution. Now the challenge you have with your daughter has come to a human final end. They were saying, there's nothing any man could do now. Everything has come to a final end. But you know, Christ is not any lamb, any, any man. And Christ is not any lamb. And Christ is not any leader. It's unique. What other people cannot do, the Lord will do it in your life. What you might have given up as if this will not work because we've come to the final end. The Lord will penetrate into your life tonight. That thing people said, no man can do this. The one that is greater than all men is going to do it. He's going to affirm it. He's going to kill you. And it's going to destroy every work of the devil in your life tonight in Jesus' name. That's why the Lord said, remember, he is the healing Lord. Of all goodness, all goodness resides in him. The goodness that will heal, the goodness that will heal, the goodness that will deliver. The goodness that will set you free. The goodness that will perform miracle in your life. Everything resides in him. That's why he says, be not afraid. Be not afraid that this sickness will take your life. It will not take your life. Be not afraid that this affliction will swallow you up. It will not swallow you up. Be not afraid that it kills so and so, it kills such and such. I'm the next one, what can I do now? God in Christ has done everything for you. And tonight, as you look up to the Lord, and you are not afraid that day sickness will continue, the power of the Lord and the healing virtue of the Lord will come into your life tonight. It will set you free. Where are you there? Set you free. Free from sickness. And free from affliction. And free from all those demons that are harassing your life. Tonight, be not afraid. Only believe. And that faith will work in your life in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 38. Acts chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. When the Father sent Christ 
his only begotten son, Jesus, into the world. He anointed him to do what he has sent him to do. He empowered him to do what the heavenly father wanted him to do. He equipped him with all the power of the Holy Ghost. And that power works in his life. That's the reason why everywhere he went, the lame started walking. Everywhere he went, the blind saw. Everywhere he went, miracles took place. He demonstrated the majesty and the glory of the power of God beyond description. Why? Because the Father who sent him, who appointed him, also equipped him and empowered him. And today, that power is here. And it's by your side there. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And the Lord is by your side there. Where you see? I said, where is Jesus tonight? The healer. Where is he tonight? The deliverer. Where is he tonight? And we really mean that he will do the miraculous in your life. How God, the God of heaven, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that cannot fail, and the one that has all power, the faithful God, God of Nazareth, with the Holy Ghost and with power. That power was for your sake. That power was to heal you and to deliver you and to set you free. And the Father in heaven, faithful, he has anointed him of the Holy Ghost and he went about doing good. Never does evil. Every evil thing that Satan has done, when Christ gets to you, he reverses that evil thing. He removes that evil thing because he came not to do evil. He came to reverse. He came to remove all the evil things that evil powers have done in your life. Congratulations, you are here tonight. It will do good in your life. You went about doing good, healing all, healing all, healing all, no exception, all. Whatever the description of your sickness, healing all. And whatever place you come from, healing all. Because that's the universal goodness that he brought. No discrimination and no partiality. The man, the woman, the boy, the girl, the old, the young, he will heal you tonight. Because he is the same yesterday and today and forever. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Oppressed of the devil. God the Father never oppresses anyone. If there's any oppression there, it's coming from the devil. And Christ came so that he will destroy. all the works of the devil in your body, in your mind, in your brain, in your heart, in your life, Christ will do the good thing tonight. And it will destroy the works of the devil. Because it's... says because... ...for God was with 
him. God was with him. And God walks with him. And God operates with him. And God does marvelous, miraculous, majestic things with him. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth or the Holy Ghost, our power, who went about doing good as he goes about tonight doing good. I said doing good. I said doing good. Healing and delivering and setting free and breaking the yoke in your life and sending those demons, sending them packing out of your life in Jesus' name. As God was with him, he is still even now with God, and God is still with him. Number one is to behold the heavenly Lamb of God. Number two is to believe the healing Lord of all goodness. Now, when will that salvation begin in your life? When will that healing come into your life? And when will that miracle enter into your body, into your life? It is now. I come to number three now. Point number three, beginning the honorable life of grace. The honorable life of grace. Before we behold the Lamb. Before we believe the Lord will live dishonorable lives of disgrace, of shame, of degradation. But as we realize that all the effort we make, all the power we have, all the trying we're trying to do cannot take away that life dishonorable and disgraceful and now we turn to the Lord as you turn to the Lord it will be the beginning of our honorable life of grace in your life grace is the gift of God that he gives to us without paying for it without shedding tears for it and without human effort for it. Once there is human effort, and you can say, I got this because I tried. It's no more grace. It's the reward of your effort. But when you come and you say, nothing in my hands I bring simply to the cross, I cling, then is blood cleanses you free of charge without saying I paid that I did that I tried that I endeavored that all you have is works if that is what you are saying that I paid for this but when you come and there's nothing you have done and you depend only of what Christ has done on the cross at Calvary and you look to him and you understand grace as accomplished this and it's free of charge for me because Christ paid each all at Calvary Christ paid each all with his death Christ paid each all with that final sacrifice when he said it is finished Christ paid each all
all and salvation becomes yours because of what Christ has done beginning the honorable life of grace in Ephesians chapter 2 reading from verse 5 Ephesians chapter 2 reading from verse 5 even when we were dead in sins terrible was so deep in sin entrenched in sin sin was in our hearts in our lives in our habits in our disposition In our desires, dead in sin, buried in sin, was swimming in the ocean of sin, were drowning because of the sinful practices. Of our lives, if we are totally drowned or have been totally totally dead or have gone to the other side and that is the darkness forever and ever hellfire forever and ever and at that time we heard of the heavenly love of God that takes away the sin of everyone we were dead in sin he has quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved by the free gift of God ye are saved by the death of Christ on the cross of Calvary ye are saved and by believing on the Lord that took away all your sins by grace ye are saved look at verse 8 there in verse 8 it says for by grace it's still reminding us that it is not your human effort it is not your human self-righteousness it is not by your sin I married this I've done this I've done this I've done that look at my record my record shows that I have been trying my best every time your best cannot reach out and get salvation without repentance and faith in the Lord. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith. You believe on the Lord and then you are saved. You come, you say, Lord, this is what I depend on. And the only thing I depend on is what Christ, the heavenly Lamb of God, has done for me. And I come to receive that salvation on the basis of... of the perfect substitutionary atonement of Christ for me. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith. It says, and that not of yourselves, that not of your effort, that not of your human endeavor, that not of your human works, that not of 
I'm better than so and so. I'm higher than so and so. I have done this which others have not done. It says, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And the gift of God in salvation will come to you today. The gift of God in healing will come to you today. And the gift of God in deliverance will come to you today. And the Lord will do everything good. Everything saving. Everyone, everything healing. Everything delivering. He'll do it in your life today in Jesus' name. Who can have this salvation of the Lord now that Christ has paid it and he paid it all for all he paid everything he ought to pay for everyone on the face of the earth in every generation in Titus chapter 2 we're looking at verse 11 in Titus chapter 2 verse 11 for the grace of God that Bring us salvation. You see that? The grace of God, the gift of God, the, 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 the outcome of what Christ did on the cross of Calvary. That grace, that gift, that outcome of the sacrifice of Christ for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. As appear to all men, as appear to everyone, is appearing to you now. It's coming to you now. And as you say, I behold that, I can see that. Christ died for me. I see that in my mind. I. I see that with faith in my heart. It will catch up on you there, and tonight you'll be saved. I say tonight you'll be saved because that salvation Oh, grace bringing that salvation has appeared to all men. Verse 12, in verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness, you see, because Christ has come to save me. I turn away from every form of sin, every form of ungodliness, every form of private evil sin because that grace when it comes it makes us to deny ungodliness and worldly laws worldly, delete, worldly desires and if ungodliness now knocks at the door we we'll say who is there knocking at the door at my door and the voice says I'm your old habit I'm the old ungodliness. I'm the old evil things we used to do together. Oh, you see, I've closed the door to that. I say no to that now. I deny that now. And no ungodliness or righteousness, evil habit will remain in your life in Jesus' name. It says that grace that brings salvation appearing to all men now teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world it's yours tonight say it's mine tonight it's yours tonight the lord will give you Abundance of grace tonight. In Psalm 84, reading from verse 11. Psalm 84, we're looking at verse 11. For the Lord God is a son and a shield. Think about that. The Lord God is a son and a shield. As the sun shines from the sky, it shines upon everyone. And it's an illustration 
for us that the Lord who gives us the sunshine as well as the cloud that shields us from the heat of the sun, the same way as he gives us, everyone without exception, the sun to dry what we need to dry up and the shield, the clouds that covers us, overshadows us, everyone without exception. The same thing, the grace of God. The salvation of God, the healing of God is made available to everyone. And then it says, the Lord will give grace and glory. The Lord will give grace and glory. The grace of God will come to you tonight. The glory of God will shine forth in your life tonight in Jesus' name. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. No good thing. As you come to the Lord, he'll give you the grace and the power, the strength to not begin to walk uprightly. And from the beginning of that journey of faith, walking uprightly, no good thing will be withheld from you. Salvation is a good thing. It will not be worth hell from you. Healing is a good thing. It will not be worth hell from you. And deliverance is a good thing. Answers to prayer is a good thing. It will not be worth hell from you. You have the goodness of the Lord in salvation tonight, in healing tonight, in deliverance.
to our brethren in France as they continue in worship.
Oh, say this kind God, no. I never see your type, oh. Well, this kind of God, oh. Let's be your holy name. I say this kind, this kind God, no. Me, I never see your type, oh. of the Lord. 